The second Marine Division embarked two regiments in APAs and one regiment remained on Saipan. The LSTs were all top deck preloaded with supplies. No supplies were carried that could not roll across the beach in ducks or LVTs to inland dumps. The 4th Marine Division was embarked in LSTs. From Jig Minus 3 to Jig Day, Corps artillery fired more than 324 missions. During the night of 23 July, Jig Minus 1, underwater demolition teams conducted reconnaissance of beaches White 1 and 2, and also the beaches of Tinian Town. Results of the reconnaissance on beaches off Tinian Town were negative. On beaches White 1 and 2, some mines were found on the reef. It was not possible to remove these mines entirely prior to landing. On the morning of Jig Day, 24 July, 1944, the weather was fair. Visibility generally 15 miles, slight sea swell from the northeast, wind south, average 15 knots. The tactical groups arrived in their assigned areas off the beaches at 0600 and immediately began launching LVTs. At the same time, a sweep for mines off white beaches was begun and completed as scheduled. LST's Ashland and Belgrove arrived in the area at 0600 and commenced launching LCMs with tanks. Control vessels took their assigned stations. The concentration of explosives in the beach area immediately preceding the landing was very heavy. Supporting the assault waves and firing in the vicinity of the landing beaches were 96 105 millimeter howitzers, 36 155 millimeter howitzers, and 24 155 millimeter guns. Two battleships, one heavy cruiser, and four destroyers delivered fire and supported the landing, lying to in assigned stations close to the beaches and the boat lanes. At 0730, because of a delay in formation of initial assault waves, CTF 52 announced a delay at how hour of 10 minutes. New how hour, 0740. The first wave was dispatched at 0717. Subsequent waves were dispatched on time to meet the new how hour. 30 LCIs supported the landing with rocket and 40 millimeter gunfire. Part of the LCIs led the LVT assault waves to the beach. The remaining LCIs moved toward the beaches outside the boat lanes and delivered close support fire on the flanks. In this operation, LCI-460 was hit by enemy gunfire, which wounded two enlisted men seriously. No other supporting ship was hit. Sporadic enemy gunfire in the boat lanes was unaffected. The strong tidal current setting northward across the boat lanes made it difficult for the initial LVT waves to maintain the proper direction. The first wave landed on Beach White 1 at 0742, on Beach White 2 at 0750. The assault regiment on Beach White 1 landed in column of battalions, on Beach White 2, two battalions abreast. It was known in advance there were anti-boat mines on Beach White 2, for these reasons, troops were instructed to disembark from LVTs at the water's edge, making their way inland between boulders. LVTs were instructed not to land until the beaches had been cleared of mines. In spite of these precautions, two LVTs were blown up by mines on Beach White 2 on Jig Day. Engineers removed 15 anti-boat mines from this beach, all buried between high and low water marks. At the same time, a demonstration was being executed off Tinian Town. A simultaneous landing wave circled as though in preparation for coming ashore. This demonstration encountered heavy enemy fire, which damaged one battleship and one cruiser. Our vessels continued this feint until 1000 and then withdrew. On beaches White 1 and 2, only slight resistance was met by troops of the 4th Division. Such rapid advancement was made that by 1200, the reserve regiment of the 4th Division commenced landing. 
after clearing the reef and landing beaches of mines two companies of tanks came ashore it was then sixteen hundred two hours later the first elements of the second marine division commenced landing days and found us with essential toehold secured on tinny an island plans for improving the beaches were put into effect without delay two l c t s have been preloaded with bulldozers tractors and other shore party equipment this equipment was landed early in the afternoon of jig day and set to work at once clearing road exits and improving beaches the two pontoon causeway piers previously made ready were towed from saipan and arrived prior to dawn it was realized that maximum advantage had to be taken of the good weather and favorable sea conditions then obtained since even a moderate swell would interfere seriously with unloading on the exposed beaches. Maximum effort was made to prepare the beaches for earliest possible landing of supplies and equipment. This procedure paid dividends later. The first night ashore, determined enemy groups armed with machine guns, infiltrated marine lines, and fired into rear areas at artillery and their installations. Throughout the night, severe counterattacks were experienced supported by many tanks. As the first streaks of dawn appeared, the Jap attacks increased to maximum intensity. The morning of Jig plus one found the field strewn with enemy dead. The Japs had lost more than 500 killed and several tanks knocked out. At 0830, three destroyers stood offshore and began a one hour and 15 minute preparation bombardment for the morning attack. One battleship and five destroyers provided call fire while beach supporting fires were provided by two cruisers. At 10 hundred, troops of the 4th Division jumped off to the attack. The going was tough and in some spots slow. Chief resistance came mainly from Japs and placed in caves among the cliffs which faced the troops on the south. On the edges of the Yushi Point airfield, the enemy stubbornly resisted. Two regiments of the 2nd Marine Division were landed during the day. Japs continued to pound the beaches with artillery and mortar fire. This restricted the flow of supplies accordingly. All 75 millimeter pack howitzers battalions were ashore by mid-afternoon. The orders were issued immediately to commence landing the 105 millimeter howitzer battalions of the 14th Marines. Anxious to gain control of the Yushi Point airfield and seize the 4th Beach headline, troops attack at 0800 Jig Plus 2 day with two divisions abreast. Carrier and land-based planes joined in the attack with excellent results. In addition to normal street and bombing missions, land-based planes dropped incendiaries employing both napalm and gas diesel-filled belly tanks. Progress was rapid along the entire front. By 1000, the Yushi Point airfield had been captured. Two hours later, the old three line, the assigned objective, had been reached. The troops were then ordered to advance south at the discretion of division commander. 